Cutie Station. Hey everyone, this is Blue Spell. I am a songwriter, producer, and musician. I generally make alternative pop music, and I generally use Ableton Live. So this is kind of a production video that is just outlining six things that I find that help me produce. So I'm hoping that it'll help everyone else produce too. So please enjoy. Thanks. Number one, gardener versus architect. The first tip is really not my own idea. It's an idea that was presented by George R.R. R. Martin, the author of the A Song of Ice and Fire books, also known as Game of Thrones. So this idea is like authors kind of follow two styles of creation. You're either a gardener or an architect. You're not really solely one or the other, but you, the way you create kind of follows one more one or the other. So I think of creating music in the same way. So I tend to be more of an architect, which means that I kind of have a blueprint or a structure when I first start versus a gardener would maybe have like a single sound or a single instrument or a single vocal line and then they build off that and they're not really too concerned about the structure when they first start creating. So again, I tend to be more of an architect but I'm using my song Moon Dance to highlight an instance where I kind of adopted the gardener style of creation. So as you can see, I really start off the song with this main ukulele um, chord progression. <laughs> And then I really just build off that because I don't actually have a true chorus and verse or any of those types of traditional sections. And I didn't really fully map out the song beforehand. It's really more just I use that chord progression and then saw how it could grow. So I planted the seed and I saw how it, how it could grow. Number two. Explore timbres. So when you're exploring different timbres, what I mean is exploring different ways instruments sound and how instruments can sound together. So when you are producing something, explore any avenue of how your guitar could possibly sound. Like, how can you make your guitar sound totally different from each other? Or within your song, how... Can I organize it and how can I produce it so that these contrasting sounds can sound good together? So I'm going to highlight this with my song called Unlight off my um, most recent album. With this song, I explore a lot of different types of sounds. So the first sound I'm just going to kind of highlight is, you know, I play around with guitar. Within that, um, I've got like guitars that are reversing and different, like it sounds like an acoustic guitar because of the type of EQing I've done. And, but then this is kind of contrasting from the synths that come on later in the song. And then I also decided to use a vocoder in and out of the song. Again, another totally different timbre. So that's something you would hear in like a Daft Punk song, but this isn't a Daft Punk song. So again, just explore everything that you have but then narrow it down based on what your vision is for your song. Number three, 
get weird. So with this tip, it's really just about using effects in creative ways. So for instance, you know, you generally use a guitar amp for a guitar, but why not try to do it with a drum kit? Use a guitar amp with a drum kit or use like use it on vocals and get a really gritty effect, get an effect that you wouldn't think that you would get. So to demonstrate this, I'm using my most recent released song, which is called Bleeding Star. So with this song, I thought it would be a cool idea to try putting a vocoder on a recording of an electric guitar. So this is what it sounds like here. So it's a little bit of a weird sound, but that's kind of what I was going for because that whole outro is just all about interesting effects. So I'll just play the synths and the guitars for you. So yeah, just be creative with your effects and what you use and what you use with what instruments because it'll really enhance your production and it'll teach you more about the, the effects and pedals and amps and VSTs that you do use. Number four, visualize. With my next tip, um, you want to think of your song not only as how you hear it, but how you see it. It's almost like a synesthetic approach to music. And I think it helps me produce because it helps me think of the song more holistically than just, this is how I hear it. I want to know how I see it. I want to know how it appears to me. So, for instance, with my song, Devils and Angels, this is the set right here, I, um, I see the song as being representative of the color pink. And so I chose some of my track colors to represent that. I don't really know why, but it sort of helps me in having a pure vision for my song. I also like to think of things in terms of landscapes or like roller coasters or rides or like drives or weather. Um, this song I think of more as a landscape with a section of like, you know, you're just walking down a regular path and then you're slowly walking up a hill and then there's a big hill and then you there's drop-offs and valleys and stuff like that. So to demonstrate that, the first verse I would say is like a flat ground. And then the pre-chorus is like walking up a hill. What's the use in following you or and then that leads into the chorus, which is a big climax, so you're at the top of that hill. And then, like, going from the bridge to the, um, sorry, going from the chorus to the bridge, it's kind of a drop-off effect. So with that drop off, it's kind of almost like a cliff. So that's another visual that you could use. Number five, study your influences. So with this next tip, you really want to understand who you listen to and understand the music that you listen to, understand what you like about it, understand how those songs are mixed, understand what's featured more, what's featured less and understand the instrumentation, and then use your influences to inform how you make your music. And then this is also really important because you can use those songs that you really know, that you've studied essentially, as future reference tracks when you're mixing. So this is something I've started to use re recently. So um, for this brand new song that I've made, it's not released yet, 
I use Belly of the Beat by Grimes as a reference because I want the mix to sound like that song. So here's a little preview. Number six, restrict yourself. So for the last tip, you really want to give yourself restrictions. And what this means is you want to limit yourself so that you have parameters from which you can create. So for instance, you could tell yourself, I'll only make a song with guitar sounds or I'll only make a song with synth sounds. An example of when I've done this is for my song Revelation. So with this song, I wanted to use a 14th century style song, and that was my restriction. So that type of music has this kind of A, B, A song form. So with the main A theme, you hear this. And then with the B theme, you hear this. And then that repeats, and then you go into a variation of the game. So that's slightly different from the first A form. And then you go back to the main A form. So again, restricting yourself will allow yourself to be more creative within the framework you give yourself. So I hope that this video has been informative for you and I hope that it helps in your production in any sort of way. And hopefully I'll do one of these again. So please remember to like, subscribe, and listen. My artist name is Blue Spell. You can find me on Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, Bandcamp, etc. Um... And please also follow QT Station on Twitter, SoundCloud, Instagram, and YouTube. It would be so great if we could all get your support. So thanks, and happy producing.